Good evening, I'm Shogun Mohammed, and this is the 7 o'clock news. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Safriya Palace the CEO of the United States Chamber of Commerce Tom Donahue upon his visit to the kingdom. His Majesty welcomed Donahue and reviewed with him the deep-rooted historic relations between Bahrain and the U.S. and affirmed the importance of exchanging visits between state officials in supporting joint cooperation in all fields. His Majesty the King affirmed the importance of maintaining close relations between the two countries and developing them for the benefit of the two friendly people. He hailed the economic partnership between the two countries, reinforced by the free trade agreement, which has contributed to doubling the volume of trade and supporting U.S. economic activity in the region, noting that many of the leading American companies have established in Bahrain a regional headquarters to manage its business because of the availability of investment possibilities. His Majesty affirmed that the strategic location and qualified human caterers in various sectors have made the kingdom an economic destination, attracting investments, noting the important role of the private sector in supporting and developing Bahraini-U.S. cooperation and benefit from agreements concluded between the two countries to provide more investment opportunities and establish joint ventures to serve the interests of the two countries and their people. For his part, Donahue praised the deep-rooted Bahraini-U.S. relations, especially in commercial fields, and the FTA, which reinforced these relations. He also stressed the U.S.'s keenness to continue developing relations and expressed pleasure in visiting Bahrain and the warm welcome he received. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa issued a circular today stipulating the 1440th Hijri New Year public holiday. The Kingdom's ministries, departments and official institutions will all be closed on Tuesday, September 11th, corresponding to the first of Muharram marking this occasion. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at the Dhabiya Palace a number of senior officials where he discussed with them a number of local and international affairs. His Royal Highness affirmed that the awareness of Bahraini citizens, their keenness to protect their country and contribution to its development is the basis for a better future and ensures the prosperity of the country. The Prime Minister asserted that the next stage requires further work, which promotes the status of Bahrain in achieving the aspirations of its citizens, stressing that the government continues to implement service projects in the kingdom according to a comprehensive development strategy. During the meeting, His Royal Highness affirmed that the Kingdom of Bahrain, led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, has made many achievements and gained world appreciation, also expressing Bahrain's keenness on protecting its gains and continuing its development efforts. His Royal Highness stated that the facing challenges requires awareness and learning from past and present lessons, as well as strengthening the cohesion of society. The Prime Minister warned of continued attempts to tamper with the region's security. He stressed that the Arab nation is facing great challenges that have deprived it of its security and stability, highlighting the need for more joint Arab action that preserves the nation's capabilities and protects its people's rights. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received a delegation including three former presidents who are Nobel Peace Prize laureates and had a prominent role in establishing peace and stability in their countries. The former President of the Republic of South Africa, Mr. Frederick William de Klerk, former President of the Republic of Poland, Mr. Lech Walesa, and former President of East Timor, Mr. José Ramos Horta were present. His Royal Highness welcomed the laureates and encouraged them to learn about Bahrain's economic development and the state of institutions and the law. 
The Prime Minister affirmed that the world is going through a difficult time as a result of tensions and wars, which called for efforts to maintain peace, security and stability in the region and the world. The Prime Minister pointed out that the region has undergone bitter experiences of instability, which it overcame due to the wisdom of GCC leaders. The laureates praised the achievements of the government led by His Royal Highness, which has made the kingdom an example for the modern state. The delegation also included the Under Secretary General and former Executive Director of the United Nations Human Settlements Program, Anita Bajuka, winner of the 2016 Sustainable Development Award and the Gutenberg Environmental Prize, known as the Nobel Prize for the Environment. His Royal Highness affirmed that peace is a noble approach and that the Bahraini government is keen on supporting the efforts of the international community to consolidate it and considers it a basis and a starting point for development. His Royal Highness reviewed with the laureates a number of topics of common interest and international developments where they warned of the return of the Cold War due to some policies that do not fit the requirements of communities and called for concerted efforts stressing the importance of integration between nations, common understanding and conscious leaders that put peace as a first and last choice. He stressed that Bahrain is known for being a peace-promoting country and an example of coexistence between different groups and cultures. His Royal Highness also stressed that peace is the basis for consolidating security and stability and enabling communities to advance and develop, adding that achieving lasting peace requires the concerted efforts of the international community to provide an appropriate environment that promotes the values of coexistence and cooperation. The Prime Minister expressed pride in the visit of the laureates to the Kingdom, stressing that it's an opportunity for the delegation to meet Bahraini citizens who are interested in their peace-supporting experiences and who will convey the delegation in the Kingdom's efforts in the field. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister hailed the contributions of the laureates in building their communities and their effective role in making changes that strengthen their countries on a large scale. His Royal Highness affirmed that Bahrain is exerting efforts to maintain the security and stability in the region and that its approach and aim is advancement. He added that the Kingdom's support to peace is based on humanitarian principles that affirm the importance of peace and coexistence. His Royal Highness stated that the greatest challenge for peace is a noble value, is the intensification of disputes in the world, which requires a new global vision that includes untraditional mechanisms to resolve the causes of crises. His Royal Highness addressed the delegation, saying that their role in their countries represents a connected chain of successes that formed a humanitarian aspect in defending their communities and maintaining security and stability. For their part, the delegation members expressed pleasure in visiting the Kingdom, hailing the efforts of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and the country's development, and stating that Bahrain achieved many successes in the fields of education, health, human development and economic diversity. They expressed pride in meeting His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, affirming that the visit represents an opportunity to identify His Royal Highness's experience and vision to enhance peace efforts in the world. They also expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness for his efforts of promoting peace and tolerance. The delegation affirmed the importance of the visit for consolidating understanding to maintain security and stability in the world, adding that His Royal Highness's clear vision is evident through his achievements. They commended the Kingdom's cultural development and the Bahraini society's cultural and intellectual diversity and openness, noting the role of the Kingdom in establishing world peace through its belief in the importance of supporting the international community's efforts to maintain security and stability. The delegation members presented gifts and certificates to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for promoting peace, tolerance and coexistence between world countries. They expressed aspiration for benefiting from the Kingdom's experience in coexistence for their countries. It's extremely uh, important that uh, more should be seen and said about uh, Bahrain's uh, unique experience uh, for uh, the rest of the world to appreciate uh, these uh, oases of uh, uh, tolerance, of inclusion, of uh, respect, 
of all other faiths. When we are at the peak of power, we at the mountain top of political power, we should uh, show humility, compassion, and the wisdom. Come down from the mountains, from the palace, and meet those uh, who are on the fringes of, of periphery. Uh, make everybody feel that they are part of the country. So I, what the Prime Minister is doing is exactly my philosophy, my approach. We had the privilege of, of, of meeting the Prime Minister and, you know, and some of the leaders. And uh, what impressed me was how incredibly gracious and, uh, and friendly and, and uh, open they, they were. Uh, often leaders, uh, leaders of countries often uh, appear very prideful and arrogant. But the leadership that we met here emphasized their passion to serve the people their their openness and their enthusiasm so it was a very very uh, inspiring morning uh, to meeting with the leaders of the country i believe that bahrain's uh, investment in education investment in health in, in, in health of its people investment in infrastructure investment in um, in the rule of law investment in creating a diverse economy all of these things bode well for a stable, secure future in which people can flourish. The second edition of the Strongest Bahraini Man Championship, which is part of the His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the first Vice President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of Bahrain Athletic Federation's Humanitarian and Youth Initiatives, concluded its qualifying competitions at Sif Mall, where proceeds will go towards cancer patients. More in this report with Yasmin Ibrahim. The second edition of the Strongest Bahraini Man Championship, which is one of the sports initiatives launched by His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, kicked off this weekend, reflecting the keenness and interest of His Highness to continue his sponsorship and support for the Bahraini youth in sports, sports in an atmosphere full of real competition, excitement and suspense. For today we start to do a qualification for the categories of uh, 80 kilogram and 95 kilogram and overweight. Today, uh, yesterday we start with 80 kg and today was 95 and open weight. So we surprised what we seen here from these uh, players, and we are really I mean, happy that we choose real and yeah, really players that they can be qualified in the final of Bahraini Strongest Man. First of all, I would like to thank His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad for giving us all this support. Uh, without him, we wouldn't have seen this sport shining in Bahrain. For the level of the competition, it was hard to crack in the top three. I got third place and it was really hard to get that place. The qualification started on Thursday at Sif Mall where the athletes underwent a physical examination and concluded on Saturday, where the sports enthusiasts competed in various weight levels to secure their place for the finals, which will be held from February 21st to the 23rd, 2019, under the theme, Be a Monster. I was really impressed by the, uh, my peers here. They did really well. I didn't do as well as the others, but I still did much more than I was expecting. The game is new in Bahrain and it can really help bring an insight into strength sports, which, um, which I really love. As I can see, it's well organized, as well as the heat of the youth of like people like just joining in. It's just giving a great experience like for the future, as well as like I can see like few people like 16 or 17 years old just competing and even getting better for the future in Bahrain. I'm very impressed with the level of competition. I have realized that Bahrainis are very competitive, mashallah, and they're very strong. Um, and that's very good that this kind of uh, competition will give them uh, the opportunity to participate not only here, but internationally and worldwide. So I'm really happy. 
The space saw a massive inflow of fans, all present, to witness and experience the action, excitement and entertainment of all the competitions. The championship comes in line with the vision and directions of the wise leadership to elevate the youth and sports sector in the kingdom, as well as encourage a strong generation that will participate in competition, as well as raise sports awareness in the community and encourage a healthy lifestyle and enhancing the kingdom's position as a leading sports hub. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Yasmin Ibrahim. The new school year 2018-2019 began today following the Ministry of Education's provision of all the school's requirements. On this occasion, the Minister of Education, Dr. Majid bin Ali al inspected a number of schools where he met students, parents, congratulating them on the beginning of the school year. The minister affirmed that the ministry is keen on providing all the requirements of facilitating the educational process. He added that the ministry will continue the development of the electronic educational system in line with His Majesty the King's project of future schools. He stated that the ministry will continue participating in international examinations to develop training programs aimed at teachers and curriculums, as well as enhance the results the kingdom achieves in the fields. The Minister of Education also asserted that the Kingdom made many honourable educational achievements and that the Ministry is keen on making further achievements in the future. The Minister noted that the Ministry is preparing to celebrate the centennial anniversary of education in the Kingdom. Bahrain schools have reopened their doors to more than 150,000 students from various educational levels today. The Ministry of Education has provided its human and technical resources to ensure a successful academic year on all scientific and practical standards to qualify our students for the realistic requirements of the global labor markets. Students are full of energy and enthusiasm on the beginning of this new journey. My goal for this year is to basically have a balance between my studies, maintaining my good grades, as well as my extracurricular activities, so I can have a balance between both of them. Uh, some of the activities that I'm involved with include the charity club, where we organize charity uh, events for the school. Our school has ensured that we do not forget everything we have covered over the first year. They have given us review packets and work to do over the summer. It's my final year as a senior and I'm really excited to see what's going to happen. I'm looking forward to the rest of the school year. More weight on our shoulders, which is nice. And I'm just really excited for us to complete this journey that we've been in 12 years and for us to finally see our hard work pay off. I'm so happy to be back in the school so I could get meet my friends that I haven't seen in more than four months. And I'm happy to like get back to studying and meet new teachers and new experiences in the CAS. Last year was pretty stressful, but I feel like it, it will probably prepare us a lot for uni. The Ministry of Education has also prepared an extensive integrated scheme to boost cultural, academic, technological and informational development to serve the educational process and teach students to think intensively and critically, developing their intelligence, creativity, leadership plus character. That's the goal of true education. We offer students more than just a curriculum. Um, so we have uh, the Al Ramihi Innovation Hub, which is a place where students can do hands-on learning. That is going to be our main focus this year, is to have them think outside the box. To assist our students to achieve their goals, we encourage them to set goals for themselves in the first weeks of the academic year. The process of goal setting allows students to know what they have to concentrate on and improve. Goal setting gives students a long-term vision and short-term motivation. Now, which line did you find this answer? From where to where? You can just say from line, which line? Since investment in knowledge pays the best interest, Bahrain is capitalizing on its youngsters' education programs, welcoming the new school year with hopes for a better future. Education is the most powerful weapon to change the world. And today our youngsters are back to school with new goals, challenges and dreams. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul Ghaffour. The first day of the school year witnessed field visits by governors to a number of schools in implementation of the directives of the Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, of the need to take measures aimed at providing a safe return to school. The governor has expressed appreciation to the Minister of Interior for his directives and for providing all the potentialities through various ministry authorities. 
The Minister of Education, Dr. Majid bin Ali Al-Naimi, hailed the initiative of the governors to visit schools, which comes in line with the support of the Minister of Interior, noting that the ministry completed all the preparations to begin the new school year and facilitate the educational march. The governors were briefed on the measures taken by schools to ensure the safety of the students and the efforts exerted to provide a safe return to school. The governors were also briefed on the preparations and plans of the police directorates and concerned authorities to ensure students' safety and to regulate traffic flow around schools. They also inspected the school's preparations and ensured the classrooms and facilities' functionality.